Hey guys, so Cal Val here. You are listening to the Hitting the Turnbuckle podcast. The Continental Classic <laughs> continues and Hangman Adam Page feels the raft of the devil himself yes we are talking aew dynamite with me your host adam cousins and our resident problem child mr dave robinson it's friday how are you and how is the robinson household oh yeah i'm really good had a good week this week you look like you're in black and white i don't know if it's just an nwo thing ready for next week i thought you was putting the tiny storm No, not we we're, we're good, Matt. How are all things in the cousins' household? The cousin the cousins household. Glead household. The cousins' glead household. Yeah, it, it all it is all good. We are all good. Thank you, my friend. It's uh, it's Friday, so that means it's kiddie day tomorrow. I get to go to watch some football locally, and go and just stand in a cold field while the, the boy trains. You should have had a girl, mate. She's she's going swimming, so I'm I'm indoors at least. No, you get the easy job. Wait until yeah. Ace is a bit older, man. Then you'll be doing all that stuff. Yeah. Then, yeah. You'll, be, then you'll be, then you'll know, then you'll know how I feel those cold winter mornings. Yeah, not looking forward to those. <laughs> well, well, what, what would you rather, that or teething or, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. It's got it's few years yet, so you can, <laughs> you can just uh, relax if, you know, well, you did say you were sleeping through. So, uh, yeah, he's he's a lot better than he was, mate. Yeah, good. That's the main thing, right? Um, I don't really think there's been many much AEW news. A lot of it's all been surrounding some low backstage around. I don't really want to get into that. So, no, it's a bit about the TV rights, isn't there? Yeah, there's still lots of things going on about potentially WWE getting uh, the Warner Brothers Discovery deal, and there's been a lot of uh, there's been some few other suitors apparently for AEW. I mean, surely, Dave, they're not going to lose their biggest TV deal this early. I wouldn't have thought so. But stranger things have happened in wrestling. Um, yeah. I I don't foresee, like we spoke about in the past, them being on the same network. No, they won't. There's, there seems to be a real conflict of interest there. Yeah. No, they um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure when... Um, AW's deal ends as well. So I'm not sure if that coincides with WWE's deal ending or or potentially starting with Warner Brothers. So I wonder if sure. though, didn't it? Because they, they didn't uh AW start October time when they, they Yeah, I thought so. I thought they had a renewal. But I think that they're after a new deal. Yes. Um so yeah, well it remains to be seen, but yeah, still we haven't had too much information about it. It's all kind of rumor and innuendo yeah. at the minute. But um we we'll leave the rumors to people like Meltzer. Yeah, we we'll let them. We we'll let them. I'm sure. Basic. My opinion is both companies are going to be absolutely fine. Um, yeah. Wrestling is very, very hot in 2023, as we've yeah. talked about all year. Mm. So it'd be a shame for AW, um, but WWE are the much bigger, more established company. Um, have got a lot more. A lot more stroke. There's a lot more eyes on their product, and there's a lot more money in it. So you totally, if Warner Brothers went that way, it'd be a shame. And, and you kind of think they got that loyalty for it to AEW, but that doesn't exist in business. So if Warner Brothers can make a, a stack more money and capitalize on the buzz that WWE's got right now, um, then it wouldn't really surprise me. But AEW aren't going to have um, a problem getting a new TV deal. No, I don't think no. so. Uh, wherever they go, I know. I think it was um, AXS that was potentially one of the, the things. Oh, okay. it currently is. I know there. Wouldn't surprise me for AW to end up on one of the stations that WWE have been on. Mm. You know, I don't know not necessarily Fox, but maybe um, USA. NXT's going US. Uh, no, it's going CW, isn't it? NXT's oh, okay. going you next year. Yeah, it does free up USA. Yeah, if they've if they've always been associated with wrestling, haven't they? Mm. So, yeah, I'm sure both companies are going to be just fine. Um, similar to a lot of the talent, um, moving back and forth, mm. maybe that's how it works with the TV mm. rights for the next few years as well. 
Possibly, possibly. But we'll have to see how that goes. And I'm sure there'll be an announcement soon yeah. enough. More more money in wrestling and more investment is a great thing for the fans. So I don't really see it as a problem or a big negative or something no. for AEW fans to be worried about in any in any way, you know. Not me, but uh, two weeks away from World's End as well. So uh, let's get into a dynamite this week, which was uh, which come from it was in Arlington, Texas. Um, there was no opening uh, video or anything this week. Samoa Joe was looking for answers straight away. He insinuates it was Adam Page behind the attack, and we kind of already mentioned that uh, that potentially isn't the case. Uh, Page come out. There was loads of threats being made, and then <laughs> of course our good buddy Roderick Strong comes out and uh, proceeds basically to say, no one has seen MJF get attacked by a devil's henchman. And anyway, this all kicks off the hangman, Adam Page, Roderick Strong match, you know, which was actually quite a good, good opening contest there. Um, but hangman Page wins with the dead eye, a solid opener, good bounce back from a hangman after, you know, obviously losing to swerve and what have you, but uh, yeah, good, a good opening beginning, shall we say? Yeah, yeah, really good. It's been great to have Hangman, you know, fired up, and he cut. He had a really good exchange with Joe, um, which then led on to a really good match with with Roddy. Yeah, um, I, I really enjoyed this. I really enjoy how Samoa Joe said that uh, last week. I was proven to be a liar because he said that he would protect MJF, and obviously, yeah. the whoever the devil is or the group, they got to MJF and they laid him out with a bottle. Um, so, so I love that storyline continuation. I love that what people say means something, and it's not just throwaway. Um, you know, and they follow up on things. So, I think this has been a really well told story, and we'll get to how the show ends. Mm. Um, but again, another perhaps. Whereas last week we were left thinking, could Handman be involved? We were left thinking this week could someone else be involved? And this is a callback <laughs> to something that's happened. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of suspects and there's a lot of different ways they can go. Um, but I'm really enjoying, I'm really enjoying this. And I think we had a great opening match as well. Yeah, definitely. So I'm, I'm re- you know, this devil thing has intrigued me a lot and it's been done well. So that's always, a, that's always a good thing. I'm, I'm certainly not getting bored of it, but I would like to see at least a few unmaskings, uh, soon, but we'll, we'll yeah. wait and see probably world's end. I would have thought we'd see anything yeah. like that anyway back to something that's been doing really well the, the continental classic it was blue league I think it's one of the first times the blue league has been on dynamite yeah it was, it was the first been... yeah it seemed yeah. it was seemingly exclusive to collision so this was as you say the first time they bought the blue league to to dynamite yeah and it was andrade El Idolo versus Brody king from the house of black i mean this was a solid match there was lots of headlocks and chopping on this that i noticed as well yeah. um, but anyway the, the winner out of this was andrade with a hammerlock ddt was it was this one of those ones though? Because we mentioned before, we're yet to see a draw or anything like that. Was this one really? Could this one? Would it have been better for this one to have been a draw? I think it was definitely a contender because Brody Kings looked very, really strong. Um, he was protected. Um, yeah. the Andrade exposed the turnbuckle and dropped yeah. Brody onto it before hitting his finisher. I thought that was quite a clever finish. Um, I absolutely loved when Brody King. Um, did like the the crossbody on the outside yeah. with Andrade sitting on the chair. That looked phenomenal. Um, I thought this was a really, really good match. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm really enjoying Andrade's streak, though, so I don't want to criticise it too much about not being a draw. As much as yeah. I wouldn't have minded if it was, um, This like the past week, Andrade's beat Danielson and Brody King. And, um, you know, at times during his AEW run, he's perhaps lost lost those matches. Yeah. You know, and we've questioned the booking and we've wanted to see Andrade really establish himself. Uh, and the story they're obviously telling is since he has joined forces with CJ Perry, um, he's got yeah. a new focus and those matches that perhaps he would have lost in the past, he's now winning uh, and he's doing really well in the Continental Classic at the minute, absolute front runner in the tournament. Um, so yeah, I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna knock them too much for going with the straight finish and giving Andrade the three points because uh yeah, huge fan. Huge fan of Andrade. Yeah, definitely so. It would be easy to knock it and say it should have been a draw, but you know, we'll, we'll leave that as it, I think we'll leave it. Andrade winning is a is a fair result anyway. And as you say, kept Brody Lee strong, didn't do him any harm. Um, no, he didn't look weak or he didn't look yeah. Um there there was you know uh, circumstances that you know you can justify when you when your head is combined. Uh, contacting the steel 
and then you're being hit with a finisher. You know, that is a perfect a perfect kind of cover-up for Brody to lose. So I thought it was really a clever finish. I liked it. Yep, definitely so. And as you said, Andrade now moves on to nine points. Um, at this point, Rene Young, uh, Rene Young, Jesus, Rene Paquette was backstage with the uh, Von Erichs, fun enough, and Dan House and Beretta and Cassidy walk in. And Orange Cassidy wants the Von Erichs to be his partners on the, for a six-man on Rampage, which they agree to. Um, at this point, we go to um, Kenny Omega, Chris Jericho. Uh, we were a promo ahead of their uh, match with um, Starks and uh, Big Bill at World's End. Um, do you know what? Starks absolutely blew these two off the water with with the promo here, but I just kind of felt it felt a bit flat to me. Yeah, I was going to say this was bad, um, which I don't say that very often. No. I thought Ricky Starks was really good. And I think he without him, it would have been a really awkward segment. Yeah, um, I think his kind of passion, uh, he made Jericho and Omega look a bit stupid, really. They yeah. just didn't seemingly have any decent material. Mm. Um, some of the things that Jericho came out with was quite cringy. Yeah. And that kind of transferred to Omega a little bit as well. Um, yeah, I, even the way it was all wrapped up was a little bit awkward. Um, yeah, I, I think it's going to be a great match. I, I mean, they're number one, the Golden Jets are number one contenders, yep. and that's going to, that's a good match for, for World End. I don't expect Big Bill and Ricky to lose those titles soon, and I perhaps see. Jericho turning on Omega at some point as well. Um, so I don't think the Golden Jets are going to take the titles, but I've, I've got no problems with the match, but this this promo wasn't good. Not no. not on behalf of the faces anyway. Certainly not. And as you say, Stark's definitely come out of that looking like the star that he is. I, I, I just didn't see the necessity to bring up Enzo Amore and like drag huh. that stuff up from NXT. Like Big Bill is not big cast. He's a very different uh, very performer different. in 2023. Yeah. Um, unless it's some kind of tease that we might be seeing Enzo ended up in AEW at some point, but I, yes. I can't imagine that. And and I haven't heard much news from Enzo for a while, so it just seemed strange to bring yeah. it up. It was almost like they were clutching and they didn't really have anything to say, so they just kind of, yeah, they were just they just threw that out there. But yeah, it wasn't good. I believe Enzo's coming over to for the love of wrestling next year. Is there? As is Andy's favourite wrestler. Mr. Riddle. Yes. Mr. Uh, Riddle will be in there in Manchester next year. Tickets on uh, L, uh, for the love of wrestling.com, I believe. Uh, no plug or anything intended for that. But uh, while we move on, um, Rio come back uh, on Dynamite um, against Ruby Soho. Fine match. Um, really, really short time on this. And Dave, I can't remember Ru when Ruby Soho last won a big match. Yeah, yeah. One, what I liked about this was Tony Storm on commentary. And I thought <laughs> R Riho is 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 really good. She's yeah. a really good wrestler, and I love watching the matches. But as you say, it was a short match. Hmm. Uh, if we go back a few months to the Outcasts, Ruby Soho was really kind of prominent in the women's division, and yeah, yeah her, her booking has been questionable to say the least. Um, they've kind of started this storyline with um, Angelo Parker. Yeah, which again, that's not really something that people particularly care about. I know they're an item in real life, so they're obviously you know playing into that. But yeah, I don't think I don't think she's had a very good end to twenty twenty three. Ruby, no. um, really good performer, uh, as so many women are in the division. Um, just seems that they bring a woman back like like Riho, and they're automatically thrust into the title picture, and they're the new number one contender. And we don't have the same stories and storyline arcs that we get in the men's division. No, uh, It's just a little bit more thrown together. And then competitors like Ruby Soho and others are kind of lost in the shuffle because they're not the one challenging for the title. There's not a lot else for them to do. So if they appear, they ultimately lose. So I, I'm hoping in 2024, AEW, and there, there's been glimmers of it at times in the last few months. They've been doing things a little bit better like the TBS title booking and Julia Hart holding that. So I hope they really do put more time and effort into putting better storylines out there for the women because they've got the talent. And with Jamie Hayter, hopefully on her way back soon, yeah. um, they've got the star power. Speaking of the women, just, just quickly, there's been some uh, talk now that Mercedes Monet is heading back to the WWE. Yeah, and again, she was 
really, you know, she was expected to be joining AEW. Uh, she was at All In. She was in the crowd. Heavily featured. Yeah, exactly. He so was. that was that was clearly on the cards and going to happen. But if you're her and you're looking at the job that WWE are doing at the minute and what the job AEW are doing with the women's division, you kind of can understand her making that choice, unfortunately. You want it to be a, a place where she wants to go in and she wants to help make a difference. But if... If they're a bit of an afterthought, or that's the perception anyway, mm. then yeah, she's why would she do it? She would go back to WWE and and rejoin Bailey and and you know there's a lot of stuff still there for her to do. So yeah, yeah, massive shame though because she would should surely would have been debuting at some point. Yeah, definitely so. I would have thought so. It would be a big loss if if obviously it ends up if she ends up going back. But again, stranger things have happened again, so we don't know. It could be that she shows up in. AEW as expected, but we'll have to wait and see on that. Um, Continental Classic Gold now, uh, Roosh uh, and the Jay Lethal. Um, this was a lot of fun for about the four minutes that this match lasted. Um, it was uh, Roosh caught Jay Lethal uh, in midair with the re uh, the rear naked choke and Lethal tapped. Um, but as I say before that, it was a hell of a lot of fun for four minutes. However, I did think that um. What annoys me was the booking of Jay Lethal in this, the whole yeah. time. Yeah, the finish is obviously a callback to last week when yeah. uh, Moxley put Roosh to sleep. So Roosh yeah. was kind of going out there and saying, you know, I'm not, I, I'm the person that puts people to sleep, you know. <laughs> um, so I, I didn't mind the finish, but a very short match. But unfortunately, Jay Lethal had already been eliminated from the tournament. Yeah. So, and that is the one criticism I've got of the crew of the cruiserweight classes. Cruiserweight classes, yeah, we're of the C two. Um, just that, that we've had some great matches, and it's been a fantastic tournament. Really, really enjoyed it, and the match, the match quality this week on Dynamite was exceptional. Yeah, but I just I think we could have had some more unpredictable outcomes, and I think the table could have been a lot closer. You know, between the 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 six competitors in each league. I don't think we need some guys on 12, 9 and others on 0. I think yeah. it should have been an evenly, more evenly spread. We've had no draws at all, yet, um, which we've mentioned at times, and we're not the only people to mention it. You know, what's the point in having yeah. that <laughs> point for a draw if it's not going to be utilised? Exactly. Um, and I think, they, I think they could have kept all six men looking, not just competitively in the matches, but yeah. competitively in the table and... Who is going to get to what the semi-finals? I wasn't aware, but they're going to semi-finals and then a final. At world's so end. So it's not final. Say again, bud. The world's end, the final. The final. Yeah, I'm not sure if the semis are as well, but I'm assuming the top two in each league face each other. Mm. Or do um, they switch it and go the top? Yeah, second. top to the second, top to yeah, second. Top the, yeah. yeah, exactly that. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, go. they might do it that way. So there's, there's more to play for than I realised, to be honest, because it's yeah. the top four essentially. Yeah, that will go on to the semi-finals, but I, I really do think that Jay Lethal, um, Mark Briscoe, uh, Daniel Garcia in the Blue League, um, I think I definitely think they could have picked up a win each, or yeah. or a couple of draws, or just something to keep everybody in the in the pack, you know. Yeah. So that because this match Roosh against Jay Lethal it didn't really mean a yeah. lot because Roosh had lost twice. Mm. So even even by winning, yeah. The results later on in the night meant that he was eliminated, essentially. Yeah, exactly. So, it would have been better if they'd have been a bit close. People had something to fight for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, it's the first time they've done it, and I'm hoping that they learn from it. Um, and obviously, there's there's going to be places up for grabs next year, so yeah. giving a good account of themselves. You know, and they've definitely done that. As you say, it was a short match, but Jay Leaf hasn't kind of embarrassed himself in terms of his performances. Um, and yeah. it looks like he's they teased at the end as well that he might be stepping away from Jarrett and company. He, he looked yes. a bit frustrated. So maybe if it plays out into that, and yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see yeah. what happens. Definitely so. It, 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 you know, don't get me wrong, the match action I think has been great. But I, yeah. I do agree with you that this could have been somewhat, you know, a bit closer in some instances. But as you say, it's the first time. They'll learn and they'll bring it back next year and, and hopefully do better things. It's um, definitely been a success. Oh yeah, I would say that. absolutely. I think so. If you love, if you like actually wrestling, and you got people in there, you know, everybody in there suits everybody. There isn't no sort of massive clash of styles. As, as no one's even Brody King, if he goes up against like Brian Danielson, although there's a size difference, they're very similar in terms of they're both 
very physical. much ground and pound and physical guys. Yeah, yeah. So it definitely works for me. Um, speaking of the Continental Classic, the next match was Jay Jay White and the already, as you may have mentioned, the already eliminated uh, Mark Briscoe. Um, I wish this had way more time than what it did because what I saw of this was absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Um, the Blade Runner won it, and Jay White moves on to nine points. Uh, no surprise, really, uh, for, the, for that one. I mean, well, I say because Mark was eliminated again. So. Yeah, and again, it, it, as you said, though, it would have been good if one of these guys, cost, one of those ones that already eliminated, cost one of them something eventually. Yeah. Maybe they will. We've still got another week yet, or, or so. Or we've still got another week or so of this of, of, the, of the Continental Classic group stages. But from what I saw of this match, was so good. I just wish it had longer. Really good. Yeah, really good. I loved how it started as well. I love how Mark hit the froggy bow early and, and Jay rolled out the ring. Yeah. Uh, I think Mark Briscoe is really, you know, he might not have picked up the wins, but he has picked up a lot of respect and acclaim from, from the audience. And he, yeah. he's shown that he can go out there and have a great match with, with everyone. Always been known as a tag team wrestler. Uh, he's had singles runs at times. And obviously we've predominantly seen him in singles matches and, and six man matches in AEW. Yeah. Um, but he's really, really staked to claim to be in the tournament next year. And hopefully he fares better in terms of the results. Yeah, sir, definitely. So I hope so. Anyway, uh, someone like someone like Eddie Kingston as well. I know he can still do it yet, and I think his matches are on, are on Saturday. His match will be coming up tomorrow or tonight when this goes out. It goes out on Saturday, so it will air tonight. In, in that, and people are watching it on on YouTube and, and Spotify. Um, we move on to the main event pretty quickly now. Uh, Swerve and Mox, uh, really good main event. This is another one, Dave. Where we sit there and go, this this should have a draw. The, Moxley wins this. Uh, Swerve Strickland's shoulder was up. We'll get into what happened after the main event in a minute. Yeah. Is this one a case of Swerve really... Either Swerve should have won this or it should have been a draw. So that was my reaction. I was I was annoyed, to be honest, mm. that Moxley had won. I, I was really hopeful that Swerve was going to pick up the win uh, and continue his, his, his run. Yeah. But I think it's interesting here to think about the reactions that Swerve has been getting in the last few weeks, mm. um, really, even in this match, you know, against Moxley, who's a huge fan favorite against the majority of his opponents in AEW, yeah. Swerve was clearly the one that the crowd wanted to win. Like me and you sat at home, we wanted yeah. Swerve to win. Yeah. So I don't think it's an accident. The fashion that Swerve lost was he, he had his tights and his belt was being held by Moxley. Mm. And also his shoulder was up as well, which may yeah. not have been intentional, but basically Moxley cheat, had to cheat to beat Swerve. Yeah, Swerve more than held his own mm. against the former AEW world champion. Um, so I think this was done to garner some sympathy for Swerve mm -hmm. and he's ultimately be turning face because I, I don't think they're going to have any option, really. I think he's so over. And the crowd love him so much. And it doesn't matter what dastardly things he does to Hangman or even <laughs> like hang home invasion and Hangman's kids. Swerve <laughs> is still hugely, hugely popular and hugely talented. So I think um, Swerve will be transitioning to a good guy. And I think that's why this Moxley won. And that's why this finish was booked like that. I might be wrong. Um, but after I thought about it, after initially being really annoyed and frustrated that Swerve had lost... I thought maybe that's how I'm meant to be feeling. Maybe that's what they want me to be feeling. Well, maybe Swerve wins it, the whole thing eventually. Well, yeah, and if, if Swerve and Mox are the top two and the semi-final are those two, then Swerve gets his win back in the semi-final yeah. unless they cross the groups. Um, so there's a couple of things there, but I would have rather Swerve won. But yeah, if if they if it is does play into a longer story when, and Swerve becomes an even bigger star off the back of it, then then I can kind of, I'll trust them with that to get that right. Yeah, I've just had a quick uh, read on, on socials while you were talking there. There's been an update uh, in regards to Mercedes Monet and they're saying that she's now basically not going to AW because she doesn't like the way that Tony Khan has been currently booking the women's division. Yeah, well, that kind of goes along with what we've said, unfortunately. Yeah. And, and, you know, when they've done good things and we talk about Tony Storm, she's one of our favourite things on the show at the minute. She's absolutely brilliant, but... The overall booking of the division has been criticised in the past, and you can see why. You know, you can see why. You can see why someone like Ruby Soho, such a talented wrestler, and you know, kind of pushed to one side for for somebody that's 
not we haven't seen her for six months in Riho, as good as she is. There was no bills. It was just oh. a little bit lazy. You know, it was just like, we want to get to Rio versus Tony Storm. How are we going to do it? Well, Rio can run in at the end of a match and hit a drop kick on her and, and that's it. Like That's not sufficient enough. That's not good storytelling. Um, and that would be frustrating for the other performers and any potential women that were looking to join the roster, such as Mercedes Monet. Yeah. And just another quick one while, we, while we've been here. Um, Vikingo is appearing at TNA. Okay. In January, he takes on Kushida, the new signing, and Chris Saban for the X Division. So that would be, be a great match. Good. Yeah. I just I just thought he had signed with AEW. I, 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 I don't know. Well, they they seem to have a pretty good relationship still with TNA Stroke Impact. Yeah. Going? Do we start calling him TNA yet, or is that January? You can call him TNA. Oh, it doesn't matter. You can just call, him call him TNA. TNA. Yeah. Um, there's, there's a good relationship there. Obviously, we've seen Osprey there recently as yeah. well. He's back prior again. to signing for yeah, he's back there again. He'll be, he's doing a lot. He's got his re. I think they're doing a rematch with um, Alexander. Oh, okay, cool. That's, so I think this is where Alexander will pick up his win. Yeah, and then Osprey will go off to AEW. AEW. Yeah. So there's obviously a you know an agreement there, an arrangement that if all sides are happy. Hmm. Um, the Kingos had some great matches in AEW. We've really seen you know phenomenal performer there. So. Um, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure what his status is with AEW. Obviously, he's um, is it MLW? No, MLW. CWL, CMW. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's one, well, one of the two companies in in Mexico. He's their world champion, isn't he? So he's obviously got commitments there it's as AAA, well. Triple A, no. Oh, it's Triple A. Yeah, it is Triple A. You know? I was going to say, I know my stuff, Dave. I know my AEW. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> if only that was the case. Right. Yeah. So he he's appearing at TNA. Uh, anyway, um, it's just some of the stuff that's been going on as we've been on, as we've been talking. Um. Anyway, that wasn't the end of uh, uh of AEW. Uh, they they ended it now with with Hangman Adam Page being attacked by, as I like to call them, the Devil's Goons. Um. And whether this was an Easter egg or not, and I doubt, but he was choked. Sla- he was slammed onto the car with the windshield breaking the devil nodded uh, just before that. Um, I, I like this ending because ultimately, you know, that's the sort of stuff I like. I say sometimes last few weeks where I was like, although the continental classic has main evented, if we'd inserted the devil bits into the end, it may have been slightly better. And I think they've done it right this week. Um, have you got any other more ideas as to whether the devil's changed in your opinion now? Is it still Adam Cole? Well, the question is real glass, Crimea River, <laughs> you know, as we were left last week, we said at the top of our review, you know, Hangman put in the frame, the beer bottle, the beer bottle. Samoa Joe referenced it in his promo saying mm-hmm. um, the beer that was enjoyed by a particular Hangman. Mm-hmm. Um, Jack Perry, obviously lots of controversy and yeah. and stuff online over the CM Punk stuff in the summer and all in. And he, did he, he put Hook through the car window, didn't he? Mm-hmm. I think yep. uh, at all in, and he, he looked in the camera and he says, "Real glass, cry me a river." He, yep. In response to an idea that he had about using glass and CM Punk shut it down and said, "We're not going to do that on collision." So, yeah, maybe that is a little nod to to Jack Perry, or, or maybe it's just you know to to keep Very the well. yeah to throw us off. The, and it might might have been totally nothing in it, but with everything else they've done with the storyline everything has meant something so I, I think again that was deliberate yeah possibly because I, I again i read the other day that it, this is not going to be jack perry that they reckon someone shut it down but whether yeah. or not again they shutting it down is another you know uh, inkling as to you know sometimes they shut these things down when they're going to happen just to throw yeah. you off the scent um, you know so- we're going to have a number of devils we could do. That's an interesting theory. That's an interesting one, Dave. I There's think not one point. like it. We we were all assuming it's a it's a, a group leader and his minions. Maybe that's not the case. Or, or maybe they're all the devil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're just changing it around. Yeah, I mean they've got to they've got to get to a conclusion with it soon because you know it probably will well be done surely. Yeah, I'd have thought so, and I, it may well factor into the finish of the main event, and that could favour Max or that could go against Max. Who knows? Um, I've got to be honest, I don't mind which they which way they go with that. And hopefully we'll get a prediction show out. But um if MJF retains in Long Island, I could see that being a good moment. Uh if Samoa Joe was to get the 
ups, upset in some respects because it's in Max's hometown. Um, and Samoa Joe becoming the AEW world champion, I definitely wouldn't have a problem with that either. So, yeah, and if the devil stuff plays into it, then that could be a good thing as well. Got to add a prediction show to that week's worth of content now. As yeah, well. yeah. Uh, now you said no. We, we do need to do one, really. I suppose uh, for that, it'll be interesting. Um, collision lineup this week, as it stands right now, uh, as it stands right now, Friday night that uh, we're recording this. Um, Brody King, Brian Danielson, Andrade El Idolo, uh, Claudio Castagnoli, uh, and Kingston and Garcia. Yeah, three okay, of the that was... really good, and and the the quality of the wrestling. You know, I mean, in general, in AW, it's good. Um, but this tournament has really gave us some great matches. Yeah. Um, I wasn't, I didn't enjoy Dynamite as much as I normally would. I really enjoyed yeah. it because all the matches were great. But some of the story stuff, the women's stuff, that promo segment with the Golden Jets, you know, it yeah. kind of knocked it down for me. So I've averaged out at about a seven out of 10, which is a low score for me to give AEW. Usually I'm, seven and a half to eight yeah. most weeks. And and usually, you know, the, we get some nines. So seven's a low score for me, but I just thought, yeah, some of yeah. the, some of the booking and some of the execution, particularly that promo segment and, and the women's match was left. You know, it could have been a lot better than it was. Yeah, exactly. I had 7.25, so we were quite close. Yeah. 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 I, so I certainly think those bits let it down, you know, the, good, the good episode and yeah. I'm not really complaining um you know i enjoyed it just just didn't have yeah you know, i i haven't got the same enjoyment uh this week as I, I normally would in saying that i'm looking forward to collision i'm looking for some good matches and uh hopefully i'll join you later on in the weekend and we'll have a chat about it we certainly will have a chat about collision this weekend uh also while you're there watch us there is a match on rampage that you need to watch as well um, is that the trio's match I can't remember now. There's one match that really, really is really good. I know uh, Top Flight and um, that's, Action Andre. That's the one. Yeah, yeah. They're up against Penta, Commander. Yep. Is it Vikingo? Not be Vikingo, actually. No, yeah, we've been yeah. talking about Watch it. That Yeah, that I'm looking forward to. I'll check that out in the morning. Make sure you do it. It's fantastic. I'll be reviewing that uh, already for the next week. Uh, but review that. Uh, so, yes, we'll be back for Collision this week. I'll be doing SmackDown as well. Um, we have just announced the latest sponsor, uh, Aluna Blue. Is oh, I should have done Turned It Blue, my life for that, shouldn't I? That would have gone from Tony Storm to Aluna Blue um, in there. But, yeah. So she's One of the hardest working women on the UK scene, isn't she, Aluna? And the nicest. Yes. Yes. Her and Artemis, we've got two of the hardest working women. Yeah, yeah. Artemis is currently sidelined with an injury. Yeah, get well soon, Artemis. Yes, get well soon, please. Please be ready for your match in February against Sapphire Reed at Ignite. We look forward to seeing you, actually, in February uh, at Sapphire. Um, fortunately, me and Rachel will not be going to Sacrifice Pro Wrestling on Sunday. Uh, I'm still recovering from illness, and I think it's better that I don't do that drive. Uh, I stay at home. Uh, this weekend so i will not be uh we will not be going to sacrifice pro wrestling so our next event that we'll be going to as a t- as a turnbuckle team and pretty much all of us will be there will be the ignite show on February. looking forward to making my return to the crowd <laughs> finally <laughs> the man yeah what are we going to do without the problem child comes back to uh to ignite i'm sure we can't wait well we can't yeah wait. i was gutted to miss our last show um oh, but just yeah, everything yeah. going on at home at the minute it, it was difficult but things have definitely settled down and uh, I'll be coming down with my dad to uh, enjoy another great night of wrestling. Ignite some of the shows last year, the two that I went to, the one that I didn't, I've seen some clips on YouTube and, and you know, great reviews from you guys as well about some of the action there. And, you know, you're, yourself and Andy both said that it was one of the best shows you'd watched this year and you were mm-hmm. kind of there in Boreham Wood live. So... Yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to uh, to checking out the action in February because Ignite always deliver. They certainly do. And if you haven't got tickets, please do and get some. I've actually got an old school friend. Actually, he's coming with his son. Uh, reconnected, funny enough. He was looking for, he was looking, watching a wrestling podcast. And guess what come up? He's, he's old Our school, one. mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He mess- out of blue, he messaged us and was talking about it. And uh, yeah, we're going to be, uh, he, he's coming to Ignite apparently on the fourth so we'll see him as well but awesome. we're back next week we're going to be asking eric bischoff anything next week dave have you got your notes 
Yeah, yeah, I've got some uh, I've got some questions and I'll, I'll be adding to it over the weekend. If any of you guys watching this video or listen to this on Spotify, if you've got any questions for Eric, um, just let us know and uh, we'll be spending hopefully an hour or so with him on uh, Monday night next week or a night next week, all being well. Night next week, we've got Eric Bishop. We've also, me and Fiona will be talking to NWA United States, US TV champion, Big Strong Mims on Thursday. He talks like Keith Lee. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's really softly sort of spoken like Keith Lee. Cool. Uh, so he's coming on Thursday. And then the following week, the week, the Thursday after Christmas, I'll be talking to an ex-NWA wrestler. I'm not sure if he's still there. There's a bit of controversy on his last match. And if he, if he lost his last match, he was to leave. And he did. But he got cheated out of it. But he's also been in the Iron Claw film that's being released. And it's Brad, uh, Brady Pierce from the NWA who will be joining me. Yeah. Won't be Fiona that week. It'll be me. Fiona's leaving me in the lurch again, like she did this week. Um, but she'll be back. She'll be back next week with the NWA review and Mims, but she will not be there with Brady. You mentioned the Iron Claw film then, and we didn't really um, discuss yeah. the Von Erics. Did AEW miss an opportunity on Dynamite to kind of um, cross-promote a bit more, make a bigger fuss that the Von Erics were there? I know they set up a match for Rampage. Which they're on. Mm. Yeah, but I don't know. I thought it was a little bit... I, do wrestling fans in 2023, and we'll, we'll, I suppose we'll find out with the with how well the film does. Mm -hmm. Um, is the AEW's audience do they know much about the Von Erics? Uh, I would say they would, you know, the AEW play into a lot of history and they, you know, they do a good job of that at times. I, I just thought it was a bit of a poor. I don't know, I thought they could have done more. We, we, it was like a little backstage segment. They didn't really say a lot, and then the match is set up. I thought there was an opportunity there to do something, whether that's cross-promoting with the film or just making a big, bigger deal that the fact that the Von Eriks were there. No, they, yeah, I mean, they didn't do a lot. They don't say it on that one segment, didn't they, backstage, and they got the match on Rampage. I don't know how they've come. I mean, I haven't seen all of Rampage. I saw the match to talking to you about Top Flight, and uh, I've got to go and watch the rest of it. But I don't know, and I suppose really on Rampage we'll see we'll see them in action um yeah i mean they could have promoted them more i don't see yeah. maybe they maybe as you say maybe they missed a trick there with but, yeah uh, I, I, I couldn't help but feeling that way a little bit the fact that it was in texas as well it was they could they could have done better but that was it that was die this week we said seven seven point two five uh we will be back to do collision on sunday uh so we'll be doing that uh, for everybody that will go out as well but guys just follow <laughs> us at htt buckle on twitter x whatever you want to call it Search in the Turnbuckle podcast on every other social media output. We will be there. He has been Dave Robinson. Yes, you are doing the ending, so get ready. Uh, I have been your host, Adam Cousins. But it's time to bid you all adieu. Goodbye. Mwah. And good night. Ba-bang. Ba-bang. Oh, we ready some extras. Stay safe.